Good evening and welcome to the Select Board uh, Board of Health meeting at the Town of Deerfield on May 15th, uh, 2019. We'll open the meeting at around 7.06. Um, this meeting will be recorded and first I'd like to uh, start with a pledge of allegiance. So I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and, liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you all. Um, I would like to open the meeting um, with a heartfelt thank you to all the Deerfield residents and surrounding communities, um, first responders, police department, fire departments of uh, Deerfield and South Deerfield for the wonderful welcome you gave to Megan Burns and her family coming back to town last night. Um, extremely emotional and just really um, I think it went a long ways to, to ease the pain of the Burns family to see, you know, our community welcome them back, um, back home. And uh, it was just really, uh, it's really, hard, really touching. And I just can't thank all the people who kind of gathered up and uh, stood out by the side of the road and welcomed her back. It was really special. So thank you all for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we would... Uh, we have a poll hearing uh, continuance at 7.15. So um, why don't we, you want to just do some of this other sure. stuff? Sure, get it Absolutely. done? Absolutely. So we have a one day, uh, a special one day liquor license for the trustees of Deerfield Academy for the dates of May 21st, June 6th, June 7th, June 8th, and June 9th. Yeah, this is the this is reunion for their, weekend and yep. stuff. So I make a motion um, that we approve the liquor licenses for those dates as listed. All those, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, you got to second it. Oh, second. <laughs> I'm expecting somebody else to. <laughs> um, <laughs> so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So we'll sign those and get those done. Um, to start. Okay. And then we want to, um, our next item would be to authorize the uh, FERCOG to contract on behalf of, um, on our behalf and, and uh, appoint them at the highway products and service bids and contracts for the FY 2020. And what this, this does is um, we collectively bargain um, for road salt, all kinds of different things that the communities, um, the highway departments use throughout the year. And... Um, it helps to go in with other towns to do that. And uh, do you have anything to add to that, um, Diana? Is that, that pretty much the, compass that? Right, basically, yes, for the regional bids for the highway department. So it's permission for the COG to contract on behalf of the town and, to um, enter into those contracts. Yep. Did Kevin approve that? Yes, yes, okay. Kevin is asking for that. Perfect. So I'll entertain a motion for that. Yes, I make that motion, I'm sorry. And I'll second that motion. Any uh, other discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Daniels, we will That's provide good. the form. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, oh my gosh, this is a persistent bug. And then uh, let's see. The uh, next item would be transfer station sticker policy approval for FY20. And I believe. Uh, let me just look you have at a this. draft of that. I have a draft packet? of this here. Um, yep. I just want to look over it real quick. Sure. And uh, I think it's the same as last year if I. Heard right? Correct. Um, uh, so after July 1st, all residents will be required to have a new 2020 sticker affixed to the windshield of their vehicle. I'll just go through this really quick for people uh, so everyone's aware. Each household must purchase their own transfer sticker. Sharing stickers or transporting other households' trash is not allowed. The transfer station is for residential use only. No stickers will be sold to or for businesses, including landlords. Um, the transfer st station sticker must be placed on the lower driver's side corner of the windshield. Each sticker issued will have the registration, vehicle registration written on it for verification purposes. The transfer st station stickers costs are $65. Additional vehicles registered at the same household, if you have two, two cars, um, may be purchased for $10. Um, transfer station stickers will only be sold to residents of the town of Deerfield. Um, Transfer station stickers can be purchased at the Deerfield Town Hall Monday through Friday and for a limited time at the transfer station on Saturday. So 
Um, there's checks only at the transfer station. And please have your re vehicle registration with you. Uh, the senior discount, a town of Deerfield resident 65 years or older, will receive one package of small black bags at no charge with the purchase of their initial transfer station sticker. Seniors must be present to receive the discount. Um, all, all, trash bag, uh, all trash must be in orange town trash bags sold at Deerfield town offices. The transfer station, again, checks only. Uh, Leader Lumber, mobile gas station on Conway Road. Uh, large bags are 25, small bags are 17. Um, the facility is now qu equipped with two uh, paper cardboard compactors. All residents are urged to seek assistance from the facility attendants when using, when utilizing these machines. Um, replacement stickers. Uh, remove the transfer station sticker from your vehicle before you sell or trade your vehicle. If the sticker rips in the process, bring it to town hall for a replacement. Um, I think. That pretty much covers um, it. We have um, composting now, a uh, dumpster there. So I think uh, they ran out the first Saturday of the bins. I'm, not, I'm sure others are being ordered. I don't know if they're there yet. Yes. I'd have to check. Yeah, we are. We're You're ordering replacements, of, right? Because yes, those went pretty quick. That, so if people want to compost and bring right. them there, that's wonderful. Um, um, the only thing is I thought we were trying to come up with a policy for landlords and stuff like that. We each household. No, I wasn't. Uh, I mean, I wasn't aware oh, of that. Oh, okay. Because I thought we were trying to address that issue, and not. Um, I mean, I think each household needs a sticker. Okay. Well. In all my right. mind, because everybody else, you know, to be fair, each house okay. creates trash and. Oh no, no, I know, but I thought that's what we were going to try to come up with some kind of um, way to get landlords to not. I mean, we were going, it, it is happening, so what we were going to try to do is come up with a way to handle it. You mean somebody's collecting more than one household of trash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not allowed in the yeah. policy. So okay. we clarified right. the policy. I think what Barbara and Kevin did is they clarified the policy. That's number one, item number each one. Household. That each household must have a sticker. There's no sharing, no right. uh, how, no uh, transporting for landlords. It's each household has to have a sticker. So yep. now it becomes an enforcement issue. So mm -hmm. you know when somebody gets to the transfer station, if they've um, got 15, the attendants have to feel comfortable with the enforcing of that. Um, but if they have 15 bags each week, it's yeah, a different I think story. the I mean, attendants will have a sense of that, right? Yeah, so they just have to feel constantly. supported in that enforcement. Of course, yeah, we we'll definitely okay, support them. Okay, then I that. I move the approve this policy. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Great. So why don't we open the poll hearing now? Okay. Our continuance, um, and I'll just read this again. Um, so at 7.15, the poll hearing continued from May 8, 2019, Eversource poll hearing, RE4 polls on North Street. Um, Nick Langone, field engineer designers, is here, and um, the hearing notice pursuant to general, Mass General Law, Chapter 166, and any additional hereto or amendments thereof, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on May 1st um, at 6.15. The town offices continued today at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. On a petition of Eversource for permission to locate a line of poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary sustaining and protecting fixtures along and across the following public way. North Street, four fully owned poles and guy wires to upgrade direct buried lines on North Street, South Deerfield. Eversource also requests permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above and intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connections with such poles and buildings as it may desire for distributing purposes. So, Nick, you want to come up again? And thank you for coming back again. I appreciate you working with us as yeah. we're, we're trying to find a solution that wasn't four poles above the ground, but I think we've We've talked about this quite a bit and looked at many different ways to try and make this work affordably mm -hmm. without, you know, disrupting um, jobs and economic development in the town. Um, I don't, I don't see another way to. Um, I know you looked at bringing it on from the north end of North Street, 
we looked at gaining an easement, which wasn't available through um, one of the property owners. Just it was going to interfere with their future business, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, another thought a resident brought up was to bring it from Conway Street over, mm -hmm. and it's just a really long distance and it's very wooded. Um, the okay. town owns that going through. Um, but there is, there never was developed. So it's all swamp land back there and um, it's all wetland yeah. and, and it's a mess. I mean, if we had a bridge, there, I guess originally that was never developed. They didn't put a bridge in. There is no connection there. So you'd have a, you know, it's a long ways to go. And I think that you were worried about the wooded the trees and all that. So if the you had wooded area, the wetlands, I mean, you'd talk about if, if a tree comes down and takes that out, it's right now we have a little, we, we jump across the bloody brook to feed that one customer. Um, if a tree comes down and takes him out, that's one customer and right. he's a decent sized customer. But if we were to bring the main feed down North street through a right away and we lose a, we lose a line, we're losing multiple large customers for, right. it, especially with the right away, it could be a substantial amount of time. So yeah. that's not really a design that we would, we would offer. Right. Yep. So, um, I guess, you know, you know, our main concern is to get stuff underground. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to work with us in the future. Um, we, we have plans to do some work downtown and around our common. We'd love to put some stuff underground and would, you know, in lieu of doing this, we'd just really love for you to come and work with us when we can. Mm -hmm. Elm Street, you know, downtown, anywhere we can to kind of, as, as we start to do our complete streets and development down there, if we could have some help from you to try and look at any ways we can reduce a lot of the overhead that's there or even some of it would be yeah, very definitely. appreciative. Yep, and I think I looked up a little bit with Kevin I think um, it, yeah. as far as, you know, Big even ticket. if we do put that portion underground, yep. we would only ever go up to the railroad tracks. Correct. Because we couldn't go under the railroad tracks. Understood, yep. That's a, that's a whole private entity getting these into them would right. be mostly impossible. Yeah, no. I but just, I mean, we can always look at that option. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. I'd really appreciate that. So um, with all things looking... Like so it's a, the original design. Mm -hmm. The original design, yeah. <sighs> Take a motion. And I just, I just, before you, yeah, I'm please. sorry. So I just want to confirm, I can't remember if this was the abutter, but you did talk no. to the residential abutter because now, um, again, there's going to be a lot of lines kind of around that person's property, sort yep. of like boxing their residential property yep. in. Yep, we spoke to her the other day. We confirmed with her that you know, that pole location is, is far enough. We looked at it, whether it's far enough along on North street that it's the lines won't be going over her property. Cause we're coming from the east side of North street and we're okay. cutting back over. So by the time they get over there, they won't be over her property. So I think it's, it's a better design than if yeah. we were to have to do a mid span pole on the west side and then go straight up, then she would have lines you okay. know, directly over. So okay. she understands what we're, what we're looking to do. Okay. Okay. All Great. right. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we make a motion. We approve this, son. Okay. I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? Any public comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate you working with us and trying to find another solution. Yeah, I wish no there problem. was one. Really do. And I, I appreciate you offering to look at that further work with us down the road. So we'll do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. I'll just put that you voted to close the hearing. Yes, as please. Part of that. I'm sorry. Oh, yes, yes. So as part of that, I vote yep. to close vote, the hearing. <laughs> vote to close the hearing at 7:20. Yep. Mark thank that you. In the 7:20. Minutes, please. Sorry. Thank That's you. Okay. Neither one of us wanted to vote yes. <laughs> no, but I don't want to lose jobs. I know. Um, and then we've got a couple minutes before the other public hearing, right? Or is yeah. this a public um, hearing? It's not a public no. hearing. Oh, it's so just an appearance, and yeah. I just yeah. think come on up. Is this you? I yes. think I'm Amy. Hi, Amy. Hi, how are you? Good. Good. Thank you for coming down. And oh, nice to meet you guys. Good to meet you, too. And just state your name and who you're with and for I'm the record. I'm Amy Trombley, and I work with Planet Aid. We do the donation bins for clothing and shoes. And I've been meeting with Kevin, and um, we were looking to possibly put a donation bin down at the transfer station. Okay. And we were also looking at the senior center as well. Yeah. Um, we have a fundraising program where we pay the town a nickel a pound. Um, and just to give you perspective on that, the current box that you have at your transfer station now, um, if that was generating a nickel a pound, that would bring you in about $25 a week if that was filling up every week. Gotcha. So it's a nice little fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And um, 
we were just looking for permission to do the donation bins. And yeah, um, I do have some pictures, like at the senior center, the that location. Would be, that would be great. I'd love to see. And the one other place, there was a question about the South Deer Fire Department, but we don't have oversight of right. that. And I, I don't know if you talked with somebody who did. Okay. And he said that, um, probably not because it's in the historic district. And that's gotcha. Fine. Okay. All right. Because I wasn't sure. I mean, we, I, we just didn't have oversight or authority because that wasn't our, our also, area. Also, there's but. not a lot of public traffic there. Right. That's yes. yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. So, that's I mean, I, it'd be a hard hard place to yeah. get in and out of with the public safety right. going in. My, and out, I think. my only concern was that, um, and Kevin said there hasn't been any trouble. It's just, you know, regular pickups so oh, that we every don't have. Tuesday, you guys will be picked up. That's the service that we okay. do here. Okay. Okay. And then if you ever need extra service in between, I come from New Hampshire to Massachusetts every day. Okay. <laughs> and I can come by anytime. Okay. Any no, that's that's wonderful. Okay. We, we were just, you know, that's my only concern. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, so. sure. That's everyone's concern. We don't want those boxes. Yeah. yeah. Well, just don't want to, you know, it. it as long as the box is cleaned up and is on a regular basis, and that it's not really any issues. And the other piece I wanted to show you is at the senior center aesthetically. I know you're a historic, nice, mm -hmm. beautiful area, and what we have is like a wooden donation barn. Oh, and I didn't great! Know if you guys might like this instead of the metal bin. Yes. There, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's we fine. Would. It's really kind of cute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think that would be really nice. Yeah, instead of yep. No, no, that's that would beautiful. Be grateful Thank for that. you. Great. So you'll be doing one at the transfer station and, and one at the Kevin, and, and one, one behind the senior center. We have okay. Public comment? Yeah, so right now there's boxes at the transfer station for the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. The only other place I've seen them in the town is at the gas station at uh, Old Deerfield near Yes, the I saw that as well. That's American Red Cross and Salvation Army there. Correct. But the other thing that you have going on that I understand is there's a lot of donation activity going on right now in the center of South Deerfield. Yes. At the, uh, at giving, the giving Circle. Tree. Yep, trip. Giving Circle. Um, and then they have a relationship with Salvation Army and others where anything excess that needs to be recycled, mm -hmm. et cetera, will be dealt with. And that's taken off pretty successfully, mm -hmm. apparently. And, you know, all those organizations where you look at Goodwill, Salvation Army, and this one in the center of town, they're pumping programs and activities back into the local area, mm -hmm. well, the we town well. as well as the um, as the greater area, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. um, Planet Aid tends to be a lot of international um, outreach, et cetera. And I guess, Chris, that was why I'm supportive of it, because it gives the people um, the option of, you know, doing local donations as well as the more international ones. Okay. Um, I, you know, because I think there is some, some over. yeah, there's need everywhere, but I, I think people sometimes feel the need to do something overseas as well. Um, just, we also do give back locally, like we're paying the town a nickel a pound. We have school programs where we pay the schools a nickel a pound. We have church programs. We do give back locally. I actually just um, signed on with the Survival Center down in Springfield in Indian Orchard. And we have bins there that are supporting them. We're doing other bins in the area that also will be supporting them. So we really do try to give back locally as well. And so why the, the senior center is just for center of town convenience versus the transfer station? Yes, because to get onto the transfer station, you need a sticker. Well, so To even enter it. OK, right. I didn't know that. Yeah. And there's not really anywhere else. I was trying to think. I mean. Highway garage doesn't get enough traffic. No, you got to have put it somewhere there's public access mm -hmm. and traffic. I mean, you want the transfer station obviously is secure, but it has traffic three days a week. And the senior center, you know, is right here in the center of town. Right next to the police station, yeah. so it's a little safer. Yeah. And then, and, then and, 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 and that's right. It's right, again, it's more secure because it is right by the police station. So and what it shouldn't if, get vandalized and, or anything. What if like it that. doesn't? Um, work out and yeah. we didn't you know want what? them if to it be didn't taken work out back. we could take it out okay so and we have cameras so like if dumping ever became an issue we actually have cameras that go off of wi-fi and mm -hmm. solar energy and yeah. i hear your your town is like really peaceful and i don't think dumping would ever be an issue here mm -hmm. but if it did become an issue we have live feed cameras that we could install and then 
Well, I mean, our, our uh, transfer station is secure mm -hmm. in off hours, and they have tenants when it is open. And then down right here is right next to the police station. Exactly. So there is, so being there right is surveillance next, I think and, and activity 24-7. So I, I, I'm not really worried about that. I was more concerned that there was regular pickup. Yeah. Oh, um, yes. Every Tuesday yeah. the truck yeah. comes through. And then what if, um, how often would we um, look at this? program so every year do you decide are you getting what enough? we do is like, we is do an agreement and it's an auto renew agreement so if you like um, decided not to do it you just give us 30 days prior to your renewal date and up. we will take the bin out yeah. we just need that um, 30 yeah, day notice in writing yeah okay and you can email that or and then do you you must evaluate as well whether it's worth oh yes we do see if it's worth sticking And another with. thing, too, is you guys probably need um, reports uh, maybe the end of June. Mm -hmm. We can give you the reports of all the pounds that we've pulled for the textiles that That'll we've recycled helpful. from your town. Okay. 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 Good. Sure. Yep. Um, I make a motion to approve this. Okay. I'll second the motion. Any other discussion? Any other comment? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I think obviously with the approval of the agreement, just to get a legal right. review of the agreement of or whatever legal agreement. Well, I mean, it sounds yeah, like we're and signing actually the motion a, a should be that physical, just allow I mean, the yeah, allow chair to sign. Yeah, yes. like his yeah. Because it sounds like we're having just, we're going to have a fiscal agreement with them as well, so we yeah. just need to have it reviewed by council and Perfect. town town accountant and whatnot. All right. So. You oh. can can you send that? You um, know what? I have it in the car, so okay. I would be happy to bring two it. in and yeah. sure. bring it in for each location. That'd be great. Sure, that'd be great. Perfect. Yeah, and Thank then we'll you. have if you Thank can, you guys. Yeah, if we can keep them, and then I'll have them reviewed, and then we'll get them back to you. Okay, back perfect. To you. Great. Thank great. you. Thank you. Thank you. Email. Thank you okay. for coming. Yeah, thanks oh, for coming down. Thank you very yeah. much. Sure. I'll soon. run out and get those. Okay, great. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Just bring them in for Diana. Thank you. So uh, next item on the agenda is to um, is the police department appointments. Um, let me just look at that real quick. This is um, chief is kind of backfilling some mm -hmm. things that we he had talked about in the past. Um, sure, I've got this correct. Yep. Yeah, uh, I think these are all. Um, well, the, yeah, um, Merlis is, is uh, effective. June 1st, but the rest of them are until June 30th. Right. right. Yep, there's, there's right, two yep. part time until June 30th, and then Marie says June why 1st. Why don't I read minute. Chief's letter so the oh, sure. public are aware? Yep. Okay, so on, um, let's see, on May 8th, uh, dear honorable board, I'm respectfully requesting the following individuals be appointed as part time police officers for the town of Deerfield with a term to expire June 30th, 2019. Nathaniel R. Walker, who resides in Greenfield, and uh, new to the profession, training rate at 12 hours an hour and a rate after completion of field training officer program at 1650. Uh, Brendan M. Uh, Bryant, who resides in Greenfield, is new to the pro pro uh, profession, training rate at 12 an hour and a rate after completion of field training officer program of 1650. Um, as the board is aware, we are currently have uh, seven, have uh, seven and he's got three openings for part-time officers in January we posted for part-time officers which uh, candidates were selected for interviews in total 12 interviews were conducted each interview was graded with a scores average the top four candidates were selected for a ride-along with shift officers Walker and Bryant are both new to the profession however both have exhibited excellent communication skills and a desire strong desire to learn and put in extensive hours uh, please also appoint Ms. Marissa uh, Smith full-time, effective June 1st, 2019, as she will be starting the full-time Western Mass uh, Police Academy on Monday, June 10th. Uh, she'll be started at, um, at patrol step one in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement of 2283 and will remain at that step until July 1st, 2020. Um, I make a motion that we yep. approve these. Thank you. Um, second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you for good choices. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. He's always doing a good job recruiting for us. 
Um, I guess our last item under discussions is to sign the election warrant for special election on June 24th, 2019, which would be our uh, debt exclusion votes for the capital uh, expenditure for Frontier, our portion of that, and also the um, debt exclusion for the sewer project phase one and two. Um, so this is, so this warrant? is, a, I, I want to make oh, sure wait. people understand this is a ballot question. Yep. Ballot question, right, not an this, election. This is not a special town meeting. This is a, it's called a special election, but it's a, a ballot box issue. So you yep. come in and you vote. Yes, and, and it, it's important to come in and vote because, one, we need to um, do these projects that were approved at, at annual town meeting, but also um, we're hoping for a debt exclusion to, once these projects are complete, they come off the tax roll. So it's really, really important that people um, understand that and uh, come in and support. Um, and we hope to, over the next month, have more education on what we're doing and where we're going with the sewer project and um, so people can feel comfortable about what they're coming in to vote for. Um, I think it would be very helpful if we had at least, um, if this meeting is the 24th of June, I, um, I think it would be nice to have at least one or two meetings, public meetings, um, so that we can talk about this and, mm -hmm. and people can understand what, what really is the issue. Yeah. So we ha we're meeting on the 5th. Yes. And we're meeting on the 19th. And we're meeting on the 28th. Oh, and the 28th of May. But I yep. think that's too early because we haven't heard back from, mm -hmm. we haven't gotten anything in writing from the USDA yet. Correct. They're still going through the endangered species kind of, or yeah. Correct. Well, sturgeon. And, but well, I there's think a dragonfly right or something mm -hmm. down there that we're Correct. Worry there's about. been some species identified in the natural habitat. That Which we're not affecting, but it's Correct. in that area. And I think there needs David's well, you been have addressing to go through, that with You have with to go the, the through with, permitting yeah. right. yep. process. Correct. Yep. It's a permitting issue. So maybe, um, gosh, I almost think the 19th is kind of late. Yes. But we may have to do both, the 5th and the 19th. Um, let's, let's tentatively put on the uh, June 5th agenda some time to talk about this, okay? okay. Uh -huh. And then uh, hopefully we'll have some information from the USDA. Hopefully. Um, and if it doesn't look like it, then maybe we'll have to have a meeting the next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can s bug them. You know, we'll have to and, find and out. And part of it is they're waiting on us. I know. You know? Well, that's They're like, well, have you, have you approved it yet? I know. So, I mean, we really need to But you know, Well, I, th um, I think... We I don't think have to go ahead and spend it. You know, we don't, if we don't like what we're doing, we can always stop. But to go forward, you know, we need to keep moving it forward to, to show them that we're committed I guess, to this. I guess, and then let's try to do it the 5th. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it, we'll try see to explain, what happens the following week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And see how we're, we're explaining to people what what we think is going to happen, mm -hmm. um, and maybe we'll have more information. I, I, Keep I honestly, because we're not really, it's already a done, it, it, we're not building new. It's already existing right. we're, and we're all this stuff, so it would yet. seem like the, you know, the sturgeons and the dragonflies would get sorted out relatively yeah. quick. They're not coming up our pipe. Right. Nope. So... Um, so do you want me to read the question so people have an understanding yeah. of what they are? I mean, yes, so, it's yeah, part so of public this information. Is, this is, um, you know, again, for uh, June 24th, the warrant uh, for ballot questions. Um, and it'll be uh, June 24th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the following purpose, to cast their votes on the following ballot questions. Question one, shall the town of Deerfield be allowed to exempt fr from the uh, provisions of Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the for the town of Deerfield's share of the bonds issued for the cost of the Frontier Regional School District's capital improvement program, including the cost of designing and constructing a new track, including all related oversight, and to, to pay cost of various other capital improvements, including HVAC upgrades, upgrades to the in the library media center, carpet replacement, parking lot repaving, and repairs of related parking structures, roof repairs, and cost of oversight 
associated with each of the foregoing uh, projects, all as approved under Article 24 of the, annu of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting. It would be a yes or no vote. Question two, shall the town of Deerfield be allowed to exempt from the provisions of Proposition two and, at, two and one half, so-called, the amounts required to pay for the bond issued for the purpose of funding the upgrading of the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility located at, uh, put the address in, and uh, a, I always trip up on this name, a perpetuitance there too, including, but not limited to, planning, design, permitting, bidding, and construction, as well as all other costs incidental and related thereto, all as approved under Article 25 of the 2019 Annual Town Meeting. Yes or no? That would be that. Two questions. So yes, we need, need to do a lot of education in that in this next month of mm -hmm. telling people what's well, going on. Well, and, 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 and we're gonna get more organized. Mm -hmm. I mean, then people will feel more confident as yep. well. I feel pretty good. But um, we'll I keep them I, rolling. I think, you know, the big the big question is, you know, more so, more commitment from USDA will make a difference. So I'll entertain a motion to sign the warrant. Um, I make a motion to sign the warrant. Uh, I'll second that motion. Any other discussion? Any public comment? So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And then, oh, I just need to sign those. Um, oh, I, oh, I you probably I, need a signature on the Eversource as well. Uh, yes, on the public hearing note or on the poll hearing paperwork, it's in there. Why, Trevor? While you're looking through that, yep. I um, I just want to bring up that we had a wonderful offer for a community garden that we're going to start the process of organizing that. Um, Poppy has moved down from Northfield into the Yaswinski farm here in town. And they have about 12 acres, which some of it they're gonna farm, but three or four acres, um, it's, you know, she would like it to be retained organic, obviously, but she's willing to um, um, create a community garden so people can have their own plots and um, farm right here in the center of town. So. Um, we're going to start organizing that with Poppy and figure out how, um, you know, what our policies are and, you know, talk to her. Fantastic insurance. news. Yeah, this I'm, came I'm up really the other excited. night when we were yeah. talking about, um, we had a town common, ad hoc town common committee meeting to just kind of recap after town meeting and figure out where we go from there and have a couple new members, which I want to get on the agenda to a point maybe next meeting. We didn't have enough time now, but, um. So it was getting a lot of interest in kind of getting going on this stuff. And one of the comments was, you know, the town needs a community garden space. And um, and then when you mentioned this, you know, yeah, I, great. I'm really excited. So, you know, Poppy's excited to be back home. And, yeah. um, you know, this is their next phase in their life. And um, she just thought it would be a wonderful thing. And I, yeah. I obviously, I, you know, it's a huge project to take on as a town. But when you have somebody that's willing to organize it and and, yep. and do it. And, and be the spearhead for it, as well as donate the property for yes. it. So that's huge. So anyway, um, we're pretty excited about that. Um, and her donation for the use of the property um, is really exciting for us, I think. Absolutely. And that fits in with our Deerfield 2030 and sustainability and everything like that. So we're, we're very excited. As Trevor said, I think there has been interest, but it's, um, you know, it's just sort of getting a commitment to move forward and you know the pieces, of, the parcels that the town owns are not necessarily really great for a garden. Although I think we could have done something, but this this really works out to everyone's benefit. So um, I know um, I was up in Burlington, Vermont, and they had a huge, lovely community garden. So mm, we'll just make a couple. Ones, yeah. yeah, we'll just make a couple phone calls and see if we can get some policies and you know how they run their successful long-term gardens and and we'll start um, organizing yeah that'll be great mm -hmm. um, so do you um, do you have any do you want to do you have a town administrator 
look for tonight or anything well, you want to talk about? Well, I guess I just, <clears throat> as far as the, um, I think you kind of set your meeting schedule now for the next few meetings, and on the last agenda, i would given you kind of a priority list. So just mm -hmm. in terms of, I'm, you know, we're, I mean, in ter we're doing operational things in the office, making adjustments, updating forms, updating licensing, you know, things like that, the general operational things, mm -hmm. initiatives. But in addition to that, you know, we're, we're kind of caught up. We've done a lot of our filing. We're looking into the, to the tablets. Uh, we're doing our technology upgrade this week for our domain server. Um, okay. So I'm kind of ready to take on, I'm wrapping up the boiler project, my green community project. We're in the in-between phase of the MVP. We just wrapped up the final MVP work. Oh, and have, now, have you heard anything? When it, what's the timeline on that? <clears throat> June, I think. It is, is June. It announced in June? Early okay. June, yeah. And of course, Katie's now in flux. Climate Katie got a new job, so <laughs> I don't know how the, I'm sure oh. the, because she's been a key, you know, okay. figure in the program, I the know. MVP program. So I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll be yeah. fine, but anyway, so. Well, Mia uh, seems to be really nice. She's the one that came to our Selectman's Association, and mm -hmm. uh, she seems to be wicked nice, so I think we'll be fine. Excellent. Oh, no, I'm sure it's going to be seamless. I'm, I'm saying they're probably just got a lot going on, too, but um, so, yes, but we're waiting for that, and um, but we've wrapped up the the part, uh, the time bond piece has been finished, and Chris is pretty much done with his work. So, um, so anyway, I just want to, so I'm going to start a few other things, and well, I guess the, so we, go ahead. We, um, you're meeting, with, I think, with um, Vino to get the so Friday going. Yes, right? Friday. So Friday, I'm having the uh, a conference call with Vino to to set up the next the kickoff meeting and next steps for the prioritization right. plan starting. Right. Um, we are trying to schedule. I have gotten, I've reached out to all the Council on Aging members that are currently sitting that, yeah. um, and there's one opening. I've already had an, a person that's interested, so I'd like to get that on a future agenda for you to appoint mm -hmm. that person. And then we'd like to get that um, Council on Aging going. Yes. Um, so that's an initiative and working on that healthy, uh, aging healthy initiative mm -hmm. is one thing. Um, the other thing is, of course, the sewer project. I yes. think in addition to identifying, you know, the steps for the information sharing, we have to decide about the bidding and the next steps for yeah. the for the South Deerfield project, right. not the clarifier, but Correct. the big project, because that is going to take time, and, you yeah. know, I want to get going on that. Um, yeah. And then the uh, Town Buildings Advisory Committee has an RFQ that has been sitting now, you know, for about 30 days, and I've done some review, and I I've had it reviewed by Andrea Woods at the COG. She did a great job um, giving me some feedback. So I'd like to get that going, but I think you should review yes, it and I'd make sure it's what you want to send out Correct. and then decide when you know you get responses back, who's going to be, is it going to be the committee that's taking the project from there and, mm -hmm. and so on. So I just want to, um, I don't, I'd like to get that going. I don't want to hold them up. So um, in terms of those things, I think those are the top Complete streets, sewer, sewer, healthy aging, and um, staffing. Well, and then, I mean, well, and that's the that. that's, that's the day to day. Yeah, the the, the the day to day stuff. I think is we're we're got a handle we've, on. Yeah, we've got we're, we're well in a here. great shape with, with the hiring. We've got we had our interviews Friday for the ATA. We have it's just an amazing candidate yeah, pool. I'm so yeah. I'm so grateful. grateful um, so I think that's fine. We uh, Barbara and I are working with town council on getting those updates for the elected and appointed officials for all of our um, when we start doing our reappointments, which Pat is working on identifying your list of reappointments and sending out notices to the people that may or may you know to whether they want to be reappointed right. getting your incumbent list for yeah. you. So those will be things that are just operational coming up on your next few agendas but mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking you know project wise at the same time right. you know what to manage but those four things I said are That's kind key. of I think are biggies That's what we're, yeah, um, definitely. but and if the, I, and, and I would really like when David's here to have a um, just again a strategy hear from him what are his thoughts on you know he's a, wanted to run again so what are his ideas and um, just take your ideas and kind of figure out where what, we can What I wanted to do was um, if we get this grant for the MVP thing, I, I just wanted to make sure that we had, you know, a good, a green infrastructure policy, obviously, because we're getting funded for that. Right. But also we're funding for Deerfield 2030. Mm -hmm. right? So the idea is, you know, I mean, just even doing like a community garden, you know, we just, we just want to have some basic 
a, a basic outline of mm -hmm. what, so you can start doing all these things and it becomes under, you know, Deerfield 2030. And, but the one thing I wanted to, um, when we send out the RFQ for the building assessments, when we actually get back, I just wanted to have some kind of meeting with um, Glenn o um, Olin from the um, Regional Housing Authority and then um, Tim, Tim Hilchie had gone to the, that CPA um, conference on how to spend your CPA money to, for senior housing. And then, um, I don't know, maybe we can think of somebody else, maybe from, you know, one of the, there's, there's multiple um, housing mm -hmm. units up and down the valley that are, you know, privately or nonprofits run for seniors. And so what I want to do is how, how do we make it come together or have a timeline so that everything fits together and we're not just like doing a siloed, mm -hmm. we're looking at the assessments, then we look at this and we look at this. How do we meld stuff together so that we're being productive moving forward? We want senior Towards housing. We want senior, uh, senior center. And so how does this all fit together? And, and that we look at all the resources, you know, private, state, our CPA money, whatever. Need we we need that. to. We need to pull. We, uh, we You're just need, need a core group to work on. Right. Yeah. We need a core group that's kind of like focused in on making sure everything fits together and that we're kind of moving together, and that we just don't have this information out there. And then, so you get the information. Then what do you do? Nobody right. does anything yeah. with it. You know, it's it's be just, it has to be a simultaneous kind of mm -hmm. timeline. Yeah. So uh, it, it's nothing solid. I'm, I'm just saying that. I know. Yeah. It would be. You know, nice to have that. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's exactly exactly why I want you guys to look at the RFQ, and mm -hmm. because the committee has an idea of how they're sort of proceeding with this analysis and assessment, and and it's really sort of to ascertain, almost like on a standalone basis, what what each building's. Um, uh, you know, uh, risks and rewards, right. I guess, would be, you know, yeah. what its needs it and it's um, not, it's not based on any need of, identified need of what, like you're talking about, right. what our needs are. It's just based on the current building use. What can it handle? What, what can, can it, it handle? handle? So, well, we need that. We do need that objective information. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. There's so, that's, so, that's so that's what they're trying to but, kind of start with, I think. But then when you have that objective information, you get that objective information, then how do you make it into a packet? Right. Of yes, what, that's uh, how does it meet our time. needs right. as right. a town? Yeah, the building has and, needs. And we, and we have we a have priority needs. for right. senior housing and a senior center. Mm -hmm. And then so how does that information fit in with that? And how do we work? I mean, I, I have to say Glenn seems to be a really great guy. Um, and he has had some success since, you know, he's been working. So, you know, maybe we, sh we can't give up on the regional housing authority, even though our, you know, experience over the last... 20 years has been well, not really great. We can give it another try. We yeah. Always, you know, I mean, I'm well, it's happy just to learn. another person. I mean, mm -hmm. every time they change a person, we try and it, you know, nothing yeah. really happens. Well, and we put a lot of well. energy into it. But I, I think, you know, we have other options and that's where the CPA money comes into. That's where somebody like Tim Hilchey can do some research and, and is mm -hmm. willing to spend time. Obviously, he spent a whole day going to the eastern part of the state for this conference. So, he, you know, has brought back good information. So we want to be able to, you know, integrate that with what the building committee is doing, which is the building assessment committee is, is really good. I mean, they have a meeting again scheduled for tomorrow. They're really, you know, doing stuff. And, and it's a good, it's a diverse group, which yeah. which is productive. So. Right, and so that's why exactly. So I, I, I don't want to keep them, you know, I want you guys to uh, engage with them now that yeah. we've got a little bit of time. Good. So, but we do, we could be, uh, you know, we, we just could be uh, overwhelmed very quickly because there are several big things, yes. you know, coming at us. Yeah. So, so certainly this it, is one thing. But yeah, and then uh, the last thing I think is, is something um, I want to in 2020, you know, sort of look at more holistically, um, but is um, the, a few of the things I put on the list are related to public works. So it's right. the road status issues, the drainage issues, and then I think notably a lot of our, you know, the grants are tied up with some of those things as mm -hmm. well, and a lot of the sustainability and climate resiliency stuff we're talking about. So I just want to um, look at, attend to some of those public works issues mm -hmm. and support Kevin 
in that um, so that he is in a position to start um, being less reactive constantly yeah, yeah. and Focus more on proactive right. on always things. Something coming and at him he's just constantly. you know between the transfer station and the and the roads and the and the you know folks calling him about the different you know what's going on with the roads and and who owns what and the drainage and it just it and then to have the daily you know operation Every of his operation. department yeah. he's got and a big all department. of the town buildings all of the town public it's spaces it's a lot to sit in one spot it is a lot to manage never you know to to organize on a daily basis that's one thing but then to what i mean by manage that in a proactive and productive way moving forward right. is where i think we, he, we need, need to, to support, support him, him. Yeah, exactly absolutely. we need to be able to he needs to lean into us i think that department just because it has so help. much so much going on yep. i just feel like needs some support and it's all, and it's it's everything you see you know it's know. everything you see in your town really yep. so it's he important he has a hand in all of it yeah yeah it's so a that's lot. the last thing i just and he's working to hard for sure okay. okay um any public comment no um again i just wanted to thank everybody for coming out this this week and supporting the burns family and it was a really nice service in greenfield tonight a um, lot of Deerfield faces there and uh, giving that family love and support. So we need to continue that as they try to get through this time. And um, thank you all. Have a good night. Yes, thank you. A motion to adjourn. I make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.